Harness makes it easy to use HashiCore Vault as a external secrets manager that can be referenced within any Harness pipeline. To start, we'll be building out this simple application, which checks two strings, the first string being one that you've written, and the second is a value that we've saved from our HashiCore Vault. The link for how the vault was configured will be included alongside this video, but just to let everybody know, this was created by simply installing vault on an AWS EC2 instance and then configuring it with this article so it is set up as a service with the UI accessible right here to an EC2 public URL. So let's start by configuring our connector. We already have one set up but I'll set up a new one just to demonstrate how quickly we can do so. I'll call it my vault 2. This will be only for this project. First we have to find the vault URL. Pretty simple. Grab everything up to this 8200. Place it in there. If you have a different path used for writing secrets, then we'd place it here. The namespace in this case, I'll just stick with the normal namespace at root. And we have a variety of different authentication methods in order to actually authenticate to the Vault service. In this particular scenario, I'm going to use the token, but we can also certainly use Vault agents, app roles, AWS authorization, Kubernetes authorization. We'll start with just a token. Creating a token in Vault is pretty simple. We can look at the Vault's policies that are available to us. In this case, I've only have two, default and root. I can certainly make one specific to a set of harness secrets that only I want, or that I only want the harness user to see. In this scenario, I'll keep it simple. Just give it root access. This is a test environment, so I'll be deleting it soon enough anyway. The command to create a token is as simple as this. Vault token create, give it the policy that you'd like to look for in a time period. Great. So we've got a token right here. We'll simply copy that. Might want to copy and save this to another time for another uh, location, but we'll just hold on to this for now. We'll create that as a secret. Vault token two. Get rid of that. Swap it in. Fantastic. We can set this to read only if we don't want to write secrets here. And we can also set this as our default secrets manager so that future secrets will be written here. Continue. I'm going to select a delegate that I already use pretty consistently. So we can usually fetch engines and select one. In order to have this option available to you, you would simply go to your existing secrets and create a new engine. It can be any one of these key values, PKI certificates. In this situation, I've already created an engine called KV for key value. And it will have this harness folder within it. Just to start, I'll actually create a new key value folder. I'll call this key value two. Enter that in here. Great. We have a new one in. Let's fetch the engines again. Key value two. Now, if you have to, you can manually configure this as well. I would simply type in key value two or KV2. Specify what engine version. You can find that right up here. And we'll be good to go. I'll go ahead and save. It will test our connection. And we have a valid connection. I've got my vault two right here. And so saving and referencing secrets is pretty easy. Let's say that you create a new secret. We'll call this slash harness slash my secret. I'll call this to check because this is a value we're going to check. And I'll put this string. This value should be this. So now I have a secret and that secret has a key value pair. I'll go ahead and save that. Let me go ahead and actually just 
look at the secret. So harness, the secret is called my secret. It has a key value pair. It can have multiple key value pairs and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we can actually reference it. So I've got my vault two and we're actually gonna test this. So we'll create a new secret that references the secret that we just created. It'll be a text secret. It'll be from my vault two. We'll call this, uh, let's just call this my secret. Now, we, if it was an inline secret value, this is what we could use to actually write it in. In this case, we're actually going to reference an existing secret. And how this convention goes, and we detail this here, is we do the path to the secret, and then hashtag, and then the value, and the uh, key that we're looking for. So in this case, that would be harness my secret key to check. I'll just copy and paste these to make sure we got it. To check. And we can actually test that we can actually access the secret. Great, we have a valid path. We'll go ahead and save that. We've got my secret here. So I actually have an existing application here that will allow us to check it. And let's look at this script here. So as we see, we have a string. This value should be this. That matches what we wrote. And we should be able to grab that value. Let me go ahead and look at my existing secrets. Here's my secret. I'll just take the identifier right here. And since this is a project level secret, I can just put my secret. If this were an org and account level secret, I might put org. I might put account. But since this is just project level, I can reference it here. And this is the convention to actually retrieve a secret. Secrets.getValue and then the identifier for that secret. And then all this is going to do is it's going to run a basic test to check if that string matches this value because Harness actually does basic echo protection for strings that are stored within a secrets identifier. So if we were to just say, hey, please print the string, we'd never actually see it. So this is an effective test to see if we can actually reference it correctly. Let me apply the changes there, save that, give that a run. Should just take a second. And as we can see, the strings match. So we're doing well. Just to show you the opposite so that we make sure that nothing, let's do this value should be this too. Save. We'll run that again. Should just take another second. Ah. The strings do not match. So we're able to save a secret to Vault. We were able to configure a Vault connector, and we're actually able to use and reference that secret within our pipeline. But this, of course, can be used with connectors. It can be used in a variety of ways. Thank you so much for watching.